Michael. Very great. Nice to see you again and another launch for uh, Kia. And you guys have been really, really busy delivering a lot of product, but also delivering a lot of incredible good news, huh? Yes, exactly. The, the biggest news that we've had is that uh, in June, JD Power ranked us number one in initial quality. And that's not just amongst general market brands, among all brands. Everybody. Everybody. First time in 27 years that a non-luxury brand has been ranked number yeah, one. Yeah, you beat, I believe, Porsche. Porsche. By one point, yep. like, they have been there for like five, ten years or exactly. something, right? Exactly, yes. Last year we were number two, so we were kind of pushing there yeah. up on the number one spot. And this year we got it. So what that means though, to your, your, your viewers is that in the first three months of ownership, our owners ranked us best in overall quality. So they had very few problems with their vehicles in that first three months. And uh, a little bit about that study, I mean, some of the problems that people report aren't necessarily the things don't work in the cars, but things that they cannot figure out, especially with all the new technology, right? Absolutely. It's, it's the number one challenge for all manufacturers is there's so much technology coming into the vehicle. How do you explain it all to the consumer? Because a lot of it is requires you to be actually driving it to experience exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. And it takes a while and to it, learn it. Absolutely, it takes a while. But the, 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 the biggest challenge, and it's probably one of the simplest, is pairing the, the phone if you have yeah, Bluetooth yeah. in the vehicle. That's usually the number one issue. So we're all working towards making that a simpler process. Well, in this car and other cars that you have launched recently, you have Apple CarPlay. So that helps <laughs> to, so, to solve that uh, in a in a click, let's yes, say, right? exactly. So going back to the number one, it's an amazing story because, I mean, we've talked several times in, in the past, uh, I want to say like almost 10 years now, I, I would say. Um, and Kia, when it came to the States, I mean, it was pretty bad. I mean, not pretty bad, it was bad. It was like the worst, actually, right? In, in, in 2001, the Kia brand ranked dead last in the JD Power initial quality. Yeah. Now, we had only been in the US for seven years. We came in, in 1994 with two vehicles. And so, yeah, the first seven years, they weren't very yeah, good I products. Know. And that's, as a brand, that's been our biggest challenge is to overcome that perception that was formed in the first seven years that we were here. And it's very difficult because that stays with people. I mean, it's people have bad, bad images remain it's longer in your brain than good ones, right? Yes, exactly. So that's what we've been working on over the last, say, really the last eight years is transforming uh, and changing the perception of the brand. And it really started with the Kia Soul yeah. back in 2009. 2009 in exactly. Miami? Yes, in Miami. I remember exactly. that. Yeah, yep, absolutely. That was the launch there. And, and that's the other amazing thing about it because it's like very short time. I mean, we're talking about you came 94, you said, to the yes, US? So right. 20 years. Yep. 22 years. That's pretty much like three model cycles. Like, right. And people have cars that are 10, 11 years old, so right. they probably haven't seen their new cars. And that's that's a, a big challenge for us because yeah, since 2009, we've introduced a whole new portfolio of products. Every vehicle is either uh, new to the Kia brand or is an all new design. So like Soul was all new to us, K900 is, was new to us, Cadenza was new to us, but vehicles like um, the Sorento, they've yeah. gone under a complete transformation. Optima Sportage. completely, Sportage completely, Rio completely, Sedona as well. The Forte, uh, yep. which is built in Mexico now. In yes, time, right? exactly. So, I mean, I know a little bit about how you, I mean, the whole company has been able to transform that, but why don't you tell us, I mean, what have been the, the key pillars of that transformation in this short time? Yeah, sure. So it, back in 2005, the company recognized that the quality was a problem and that the vehicles, there was nothing special about them. They were just, they were just cars, appliances, appliances yeah. almost. And so they said, okay, we to compete in this global world, we need to invest in this brand. And so they started investing in people. They hired Peter Schreier away from Audi. Yeah. And he and his design team have really put this design DNA around the Kia brand and it starts with the front grille, the tiger nose grille and everything kind of evolves from that and you can see that across all of our products. We started to invest in factories. We opened our new plant in 2009 down in West Point, Georgia. Uh, got about 3,000 employees there building 360,000 cars a year. Uh, we started investing in our partnerships like with the NBA 
which has been a great partnership so with exposure, us. Like exposure, yeah. showing people that other brands want to work with us. We're official uh, partner with uh, FIFA as well, World Cup, College Football Hall of Fame, uh, LPGA, Women's Golf, a lot of really cool things. And uh, we've started to invest in the customer experience as well. We've got 770 dealers, and they're now investing in their facilities. We've yeah, got I've seen the one in Miami, Bremen. Yeah, it's yep, beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. Beautiful so we've new got, facility. Yeah, we've got a common look now that represents the Kia brand. So it's really been about the investment. To your point, also, we just started producing a new Forte down yeah, in, in Mexico, Mexico yeah. which is our second plant here in North America. So we're really putting a lot of investment into the brand and it shows I mean the product is spectacular yeah and um, to the that perception that people have sometimes about Kia in general but also about the the, the origin of, of plants where you build the Forte I mean like nowadays that's like also a non-factor right because like the standards have have to be the same everywhere in the world, right? That, absolutely. The, the products that we build, uh, regardless of where they are, they're shipped all over the world. Yeah. So vehicles coming out of the Mexican plant will come to the U.S. and Canada, and they'll also go to the Mexican domestic market, and they'll go into Central and South America. And just because they're going to different countries doesn't mean the quality shouldn't be the same. And, it has and, to be the same around the world. Yeah, and this factory, this plant in Mexico, has to be like the most advanced because the newest, right? 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 Yes, in fact, I was there uh, in June and I was just blown away. First of all, in terms of its overall footprint, it's huge, but it's just in terms of the technology that is not just in our cars that we drive today, yeah. the technology that goes into building the cars is incredible. So another of the of the things that I think uh, Kia has done really, really well in the past, I mean, since 2009 probably, is like packaging. I mean, like you offer a lot of stuff in the cars. And, and like, for example, let's talk a little bit about this new Cadenza, second generation, right? Yes. And now you offer a lot of standards uh, equipment that used to be only like a very high, high level as an option in other brands. Right, and that's what the, the Kia brand stands for, is value. We want to offer more to the consumer than what they can get in a competitive product yeah. because some of it is going back to people's perceptions of the brand of, oh, I'm not sure, but when when they add it all up, it's it just it's a no-brainer. It's like, you can get this with Kia and you can get a lot less with a competitive product. I'm gonna take a chance on the Kia. Yeah, and now with yeah. the JD Power and Consumer Reports also ranking us um, uh, in terms of reliability, number six overall, it's, Residual value, I think, is pretty high too, residual right? Residual value is that's, very that's good as well. well. Yep, by Kelly Blue Book. So this new car, the new uh, Cadenza, it's like on the second level of your lineup, right? Because you have the K900 and then this one? Yes, correct. So we've got the K900 in the uh, in the luxury space, and then we call it, this is kind of the large car near luxury, uh, which competes against like the Toyota Avalon, uh, the um, Chevy Impala, the Nissan uh, Maxima, Maxima but the Buick Lacrosse, the, the new Buick Lacrosse, yeah. but it, it also competes or uh, is competitively shopped with like the Lexus ES, yeah, and uh, and even at a lower Acura. tree Mercedes Benz uh, yeah, exactly. E Class because again like the value that you get with these cars is that you get a lot more for your money because and this is true of uh, all luxury brands. I just recently have a car. Base price was forty thousand. Right. Options were eighteen thousand. Wow. So it went up to fifty eight. Right. I mean that's almost half of the price of the car just in options. Right. And, and that's like when people ask about Kia and Hyundai, actually you have to say that the, the philosophy of packaging and offering more for the value, it's it's really there. I mean I'm yep. saying it because I mean you obviously know it, but like some people still don't know that. Right. So so for the cadenza, for example, so we'll start off at about thirty three thousand dollars. For the, um, the we call it the premium model, yeah. which is the first entry. Then we've got the technology model, which is about thirty-nine thousand, and then it tops out with the SXL model at forty-four thousand. That's the range. That's that like forty-four thousand. That's the that's most you can expand. Exactly. So it's kind of a, you're all in. Yeah, that's amazing because this again has a lot of technology, like intelligence, cruise control, cameras lower the place, steering. Uh, how do you call it? Lane assist. Yep. Uh, lane departure lane warning. Departure forward warning. collision. Yeah. And then, like you see in the interior, I mean, yep. like this one in particular. This has like yep. this stitching, like the Napa diamond leather, stitching. The, the uh, yep. The Alcantara headliner. 
We've got our UVO technology system. So now that you're number one in uh, JD Power and Associates, I mean, that's like that's be like a harder challenge because now you're there. You have the pressure now. Absolutely, that it's exactly. And we think about that every single day of how do we maintain that yeah. number one spot, and it's really continuing to do what we've done and that's listen to consumer feedback about what are the issues and getting to, to a fix very early in the process and that part of doing these media drives is that the media tell us hey there's this tweak or that tweak so before we actually go to market we can we can get it fixed but it's also working very closely with our, our dealer partners who are integral to this process because they're ultimately on the, yeah, the, the, face, of, the, face, the face of the, the customer yeah. saying I'm about to pass this vehicle over to you. It's in great shape. These are all of the features and technologies. So when they go home, customers aren't thinking, oh, there's a problem with my car. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I heard this morning during the presentation from Orth Hedrick, the head of uh, product planning, is the way you test your cars. And that test actually helps you back up your 10-year warranty. Absolutely. I mean, that test, it was like 41 days and you put like over 100,000 miles in, a, in an engine to like make sure it works. Yes, exactly. Correct, right? Yeah, and these, these vehicles are tested all over the world. They're tested in desert climates for high heat, like we're experiencing here in uh, Virginia. Yeah. And also very cold climates, like in, in northern uh, Minnesota and even into Canada to get, uh, make sure that they're functioning in cold climates as well because, you know, here in the United States, we have very different climates throughout yeah, the U.S., yeah. and we want to make sure that they they work. So, 2001, that last in this uh, JD Power and Associate Initial Quality Study, 2016, number one, and from from then, like, there's a lot of car manufacturers that were ahead of you, and now they're like gone. Yeah, absolutely. 2001, to your point, dead last. So Suzuki was ahead of us, uh, Azuzu was ahead of us, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, uh, and a few other brands. And um, there were people questioning whether or not the Kia brand was going to survive. And Yeah, because there were like tough, tough times tough times where like 2001, uh, I mean the, the first years of the 2000s were like, we were booming, the economy was like booming, yep. people were buying like probably more expensive cars that they could afford. So. Uh, an affordable car back then wasn't like mo the most appealing thing and right. it, on top of that it didn't have the quality but like it's incredible I mean a great story because again like that's a very short time I mean yes. that's the most impressive thing to me yeah I mean the work obviously the, the end result is the impressive thing but like when you know a little bit about the auto industry I mean you probably are working now 20 22 yep, about 20 years yeah yeah like ahead of time like so so ahead of, of time but now you have to give results provide results today absolutely which makes it really tough for you guys yes but we're, we're not gonna stop with I mean the Kia brand to your point has been continuing to move forward we're the eighth largest brand now in the United States we've got some new product coming we've got the cadenza obviously which yeah. we're in we've got a new uh, Optima hybrid we've got a plug-in Optima hybrid coming uh, this fall we've got uh, the new Soul Turbo coming which will be a fun vehicle first time we're offering a turbo engine and we have uh, the new Nero which is a dedicated hybrid kind of a Prius competitor coming out yeah. in early January so, so it's like a complete new era in like a green like alternative uh, power trains right yes exactly yeah we're continuing to invest in that you know fuel economy standards continue to go up and we've got a plan to to meet those standards with with product that customers actually want to drive. I know, and looks good, and again, like amazing quality and value on top of it. So, whatever you're doing, I mean, I know what you're doing. So, good job, uh, congratulations, and uh, we hope to be part of the the, the next uh, few chapters of the, of the Kia success here in the U.S. and globally. I mean, I travel a lot. Uh, uh, outside the US and you go to countries like in South America I mean like you guys have expanded so so much I mean like you go to Chile you go to South America for example now with the Olympics and all that I know you're not involved with the Olympics you're involved with the World Cup right but that has also helped the global image of the absolutely. company absolutely yeah well thank you Michael again and uh, we're gonna keep enjoying the heat the ventilated seats exactly it's nice and cold <laughs> in the in heat here. of Virginia thank you thank you <laughs>